Hey guys I'm Yurizi. This story is all about what if Naruto is the reincarnation of Hashirama and can remember his past life. The Yondaime Hokage unknowingly makes a change during the ceiling, the consequences of which are unimaginable for both Naruto and Kanaha. What do these consequences mean for Naruto? Before we proceed with the story, please like and subscribe to this channel if you liked the video and don't forget to check the description for the other works of the author if you liked the story. Let's start. Chapter 3 Tajuna's House, Nami no Kuni It was the day after Team 7 confronted Zabuza. A day after Naruto drove Zabuza back effortlessly and ignited suspicion in Kakashi's mind. Naruto sat at the shore of Wave Country, the wind ruffling his hair. He waited for sunrise and Kakashi with a calm look on his face. He had thought long and hard as to what to say to Kakashi and decided upon a course of action. Since the awakening of his previous life, he had given himself little time for self-introspection. He had created for himself an illusion of normalcy over the months, and his deceptive mask was beginning to seep into his true personality. As if remembering a previous life, that to his life as the Shodei Hokage would ever be normal. The ease with which he had forced a supposedly a rank criminal to flee forced him to truly confront his awakening. There was always a niggling doubt in his mind that he had gone mad. But the fight with Zabuza had erased that doubt forever, even more so than the tussle with Kakashi a month ago. Thus he had finally asked himself the important question. Who was he, truly? He did not think like the old Naruto anymore. No, he had lived and lost too much for that, even if only in mind in another life. The old Naruto was a boy who was starved for affection, cast out and abused by the very populace he was sacrificed to protect. So he put up a bright front and drew attention to himself, seeking to convince himself that he was a normal part of a normal society. The truth hurt, so he had shielded himself with a lie. It was the thinking of a child. Ever since he realized his previous life, things got more complicated. He had grown into the experienced and the highly cultured mind he had developed as Hashirama rather abruptly. During the months he spent sorting the two lives he had lived, he was flitting between the personalities he possessed during this life and his previous. He knew that was not healthy, and that he was developing a psychological disorder. Luckily, Senju Hashirama also knew a way to treat this disorder. He used to be the foremost medic of his age, after all and had a working knowledge of psychology. Thus he had come here to the quiet shores of Nami to meditate and accept himself, to stop just using his life as Hashirama. He was here to become the person he used to be as Hashirama. Naruto's life was too melancholy to be dwelt upon. The scars, mental or physical, endured during childhood went deeper than those gained as an adult. They healed faster as well, but he was denied the innocent forgetfulness and forgiveness of a child. No, he was forced into the thinking and strength of his legendary previous life and that had changed him in unexpected ways. Senju Hashirama, despite his life and losses was extremely strong. Both as a shinobi and as a man. He had taken all the challenges life threw at him with fortitude and cheerfulness, and he was extremely easygoing. He had refused to give in to the dark side of a shinobi, strongly remaining a beacon of solace and hope to the village he had founded. He was the light of Kanaha, an unassailable force that kept the village strong and prosperous. A guiding force of mercy and compassion. Naruto on the other hand knew little happiness during his childhood. Stripped of parents, love, and forced to survive in a cold and hostile village. He had developed a set and melancholy view of life, and was considerably confused and angry. He now drew solace from his life as Hashirama, the love Hashirama had in his life was enough to heal the hatred in Naruto's. He would stop letting this life's trauma darkening his true self. The first light of dawn washed over the shore causing Naruto to look up at the beautiful scene with a smile on his face. An epiphany struck him at that point. He did not have to answer the question of who he was, not yet. He was still a child now. He would continue as the Shodei Hokage in mind and let the future shape him into a new person. The sun broke out in earnest, casting everything in the fresh light of dawn. Naruto could feel the confusion, anger, and resentment he had been hiding since the awakening draining away. He could feel the unshakable calm and assurance he had felt as the first returning. It was faith, in himself and his strength. Faith in his precious people. He now appreciated his rebirth for what it was. A second chance. 
It was a second chance for him to protect what was precious to him, to lift Kanaha back to its greatness. Back to the village that held kindness and camaraderie, loyalty, and faith above everything else. That resolution left him with a feeling he had been missing for the entire duration of this life. Peace and contentment. He felt more like himself than he ever did as Naruto or as Hashirama. The golden age of Kanaha would be back, and he would do his best to make that happen. This time he would guide Kanaha to be stronger than ever before. The legacy of the Senja clan would not fade away. The wind blew once more, causing his shoulder-length blonde hair to fly as he stood up, neither as Naruto the attention-craving and damaged boy nor as Naruto who was desperately trying to choose between two lives. No, he stood up as the reborn Shodei Hokage, who was tempered by the trauma of his second childhood. He was wiser for it, but not darker. He could sense a familiar chakra approaching him. It was time for him to tell Kakashi the truth. Trust had to be freely given, and he had come to the conclusion that Kakashi was a ninja who had the will of fire burning brightly within him. A shinobi worthy of his trust. Kakashi walked towards the place he had asked Naruto to meet him at. He had directed Sasuke and Sakura to do the tree climbing exercise, and left them to it. He knew that Naruto had extremely perfect chakra control. One could not perform those earth jutsu with just a single seal without that much control, even if one had a very strong affinity. Naruto was an enigma, and he would get his answers today. He would care for Naruto the way Minato had taken care of him. Kakashi made his way beside Naruto who was calmly staring at the newly risen sun, and tapped him on the shoulder. Well, Naruto. Naruto turned to face him and Kakashi gave a gasp. Naruto had changed even more. His blazing forest green eyes had held compassion that should not be seen on any child. But now they held resolve as well, unearthly resolve. Those eyes at least were old. His face though was quite cheerful. He seemed to have thrown a great weight off his soul. He almost looked like Minato-sensei. Hey, Kakashi-sensei. So you are here for answers, right? You want to know how I have changed so much. Kakashi snorted, amused. Yeah, that is why I am here. I'll keep your secrets as long as they are of no harm to Kanaha. Oh and don't bother to lie, I will be watching you closely with my Sherry Nan. Cool. Don't worry, Kakashi-sensei, I won't lie. Kakashi nodded. So. Right. Naruto sat down with crossed legs, a thoughtful look on his face. He cast out his senses for intruders and found just two people sufficiently far from their position. Just as a precaution, he put up a very powerful silencing barrier. You do know of the botched ceiling, I believe. Kakashi stared wide-eyed. You know of Kyuubi? How is that possible? Who told you? Naruto waved his hand unconcernedly. I met the fox and he told me everything about the ceiling. Except for the fourth's mistake, neither he nor I know what happened then. You met the Kyuubi? You must be careful, Naruto. That thing is pure evil. Naruto snorted. No, not really. It is just a bored immortal fox with a great deal of power on its hands. Even I will die eventually and it will be free one day, so it can wait. A century means nothing to the Baijuyu, you know. Kakashi just stared. Anyway, I know that Yandaime was my father, and Uzumaki Kushina is my mother, Naruto looked at him meaningfully. Kakashi sighed. I did not expect this day to come so soon. Yes, my sensei the Yandaime was your father, and your mother is alive. She did not abandon you, by the way. She loved you too much for that. But you must ask the Sandaime for details, though, as I have no idea why she left. Naruto was happy. His mother had not left him callously. He would definitely grill Hiruzen for answers, though. That is a relief to hear. I would have forgiven her anyway. Family is too precious to throw away so easily, is it not? Kakashi looked at him in wonder. You are no child, Naruto. Nor are you a mere genin. Tell me, who are you? Naruto was laughing. You hit the nail right on its head, Kakashi-sensei. I will tell you, don't worry. Anyway, the mistake during the ceiling had awakened something in me that is impossible for any soul to awaken. It is truly the Shinigami's gift to me. Kakashi looked serious. What did you awaken? 
It did not happen until a few months ago, when my old sensory abilities manifested stronger than ever, has to do with the absorption of my Uzumaki chakra I guess. Naruto started mumbling theories. His tangential thought process was cut off by Kakashi's sharp voice. What do you mean, your old sensory abilities, Naruto? Just what did you awaken? Naruto looked Kakashi in the eyes. Watch closely, Kakashi-sensei. You will not believe what I say without me showing you. Naruto turned to the opposing shore which was just visible. Tajuna's half-complete bridge lay far to their left. He gazed at the bridge, calculating and visualizing. He turned back to the opposite shore and gathered his chakra. Kakashi looked on his chakra exploded from Naruto once more, a massive amount. How could a boy of 13 release so much chakra and not even blink? He waited for Naruto to do something. He saw Naruto perform the serpent seal, and he could see chakra being molded in an unfamiliar way with his sherry non. Was it an earth jutsu again? Mokutan hii jutsu, mokuze no okabona hashi. A great rumbling sound was heard and the waters of the sea were churning as if something was trying to come out. What did come out caused Kakashi to nearly faint. A massive bridge made entirely of wood rose from the sea, identical in every way to Tajuna's. It spanned from Nami to the mainland in a straight line, and it was monstrous in size. It was about half again as large as Tajuna's bridge. Kakashi pinched himself hard, convinced he had lost it. No, the bridge had not disappeared. He flared his chakra to a high, and then... Kai he yelled sending out a huge blast of chakra. Naruto face palmed. Convinced he was not under a genjutsu, Kakashi stared at the wooden bridge reverently. Then he turned to Naruto with a look of absolute amazement on his face. How? He asked, his voice shaking. You asked me twice what I had awakened, Kakashi-sensei. The answer is... I awakened memories of my previous life and became that person recently, with a few changes of course. Kakashi had a look of dawning realization on his face, but still observed Naruto with his sherry non-blazing. I was an Amsenju Hashirama, one of Kanaha's founders and its Shode Hokage. Kakashi did faint this time. Momoichi Zabuza had just woken up groggily and the first thing he saw was Gato's unpleasant face leering at him. Woken up have you, demon of the bloody mist. Haku appeared in front of Gato and released his killer intent, causing Gato to fall down to his knees. He let up a moment later. Leave. Scum like you don't even deserve to lick the feet of Zabuza-sama. Gato scowled as well. Make sure you get the job done, or else. Zabuza turned to Gato slowly. The blonde boy is very strong. He and Kakashi together cannot be defeated by just me and Haku. You will need to reinforce us with more shinobi. And where am I to get more shinobi? It was hard enough to get hold of you too. Missing nin are tough to find. Zabuza said weakly, I will send a message to one of my previous acquaintances. He is strong enough to get the job done providing you pay him well, Gato. Haku just looked worried. But. Gato ignored her, and looked directly at Zabuza. And who is this ninja you have so much faith in? Zabuza closed his eyes, preparing once more to rest. Hashigakiki same. Sasuke had just finished with the tree climbing exercise and was quietly eating his breakfast with Sakura. Eating alongside them were Tsunami, Tajuna's daughter, and Inari her son. The door opened to allow Kakashi and Naruto inside. Sasuke threw a glance in their direction and was startled. Something had evidently changed between sensei and student. Where Kakashi used to look at Naruto with pride and appreciation, he now gave Naruto a look full of respect, awe and, reverence. This did not go unnoticed by Sakura either. What happened, Kakashi-sensei? Sakura asked. Kakashi glanced at them and his expression changed to his usual bored face. Things happened. He said listlessly. Sasuke gave his trademark response HN. Sakura looked at Naruto. Why were you not there for training, Naruto? The tree climbing exercise? I already know it, Sakura-chan. Naruto said cheerfully. Sakura was about to retort, but remembered Naruto's exploits at the bridge again. He would probably know the exercise at that. Inari suddenly spoke up. Why do you all bother, anyway? Gato is going to kill you all. 
He is too strong for anybody. The shinobi all gave him a deadpan little shrimp looked unnerved by their silent glares. Why are you all looking at me like that? You have no idea how strong Gato is. You have no idea what we have suffered. Sasuke looked disgusted at that statement, Sakura looked irritated, and Kakashi just went back to his reading. Naruto had sympathy on his face as he looked at the kid. We have all suffered, child. More than you can possibly imagine. Don't worry, Inari, you will soon see something that will restore your faith. All of you will Naruto said, looking at all of the family of three with satisfaction. What do you mean? Tajuna asked. Naruto looked at Sasuke and Sakura as well. Come with me to the bridge, will you? You will see something remarkable. Sasuke snorted, what are you talking about? Naruto just looked overexcited now, come on. And he appeared behind his teammates and started dragging them off, ignoring their vehement complaints. Kakashi just I smiled at Tajuna and his family. He is right. You will see something that will stay with you the rest of your lives. Tajuna shrugged and followed Naruto along with his family. Inari just looked pissed, as did Sasuke as they walked behind Naruto and Kakashi towards the bridge which was coming into sight. Naruto just laughed at their identical expression. They reached the bridge entrance after a 15 minute walk. We are here, Dobe. What is it you wanted us to see? Sasuke asked with extreme irritation upon his face. Look to your right, Sasuke. Naruto said mischievously. They all did, and felt their jaws drop. Tajuna and his family stared at the completed and massive Allwood Bridge as if it were their salvation. Tears ran down their faces as they realized they were saved. They were saved. Inari started laughing through his tears as did Tsunami. Tajuna fell on his knees. Sasuke and Sakura lifted up their hands in the ram seal and simultaneously yelled, Kai. Kakashi bunked them on their heads. Don't bother, I did that too. It's real. Sakura looked at Naruto with just one question written all over her face. How? I have Mokutan, Naruto said happily. His teammates looked stunned. I don't believe you, it must be something else. Sasuke said pointedly. Sakura just stared at him sceptically. What is Mokutan? Tajuna asked curiously, getting over his astonishment over seeing the wooden bridge. It is the most revered bloodline in Kanaha, possessed by the Shodei Hokage. The power he wielded with Mokutan is almost a fairy tale. It is said that he created Kanaha's core area and the forests surrounding it with a single jutsu, Sakura recited from what seemed like rote memory. The bridge builder and his family looked odd. Inari looked at Naruto with an expression dangerously resembling the one on Sasuke's fangirls. And you have it, Naruto Unisan. He says he does, but there is no way he can have it. Sasuke said snidely. Mokutan Hiaijutsu, Shinboku no Josho, Naruto intoned, looking smugly at Sasuke. A beautiful cherry tree rose up from the earth behind them and stood about 30 feet high, spreading its branches over them all. Its bright pink blossoms showered down upon them softly, thanks to the force of its birth. Beautiful. Sakura whispered in reverent awe. Dobe. Sasuke seemed lost for words, as did Tajuna and family. Kakashi pitted them all. If only they knew that it was the Shodei himself who was wielding the wood release in front of them. Sasuke, Naruto showed you and Sakura his Mokutan as a measure of his trust in you. Please do not say anything about it to anybody until I say it is fine, got it? Sasuke and Sakura just nodded dumbly. I need you to promise me. I promise Sasuke said reluctantly, echoed by Sakura, Tajuna, and the others. Sasuke turned to Naruto. So you created that wooden bridge all by yourself? I find that hard to believe, Dub, even if you have wood release. Only Hashirama-sama could create things on such a scale. Naruto started. That was way too close to the truth, and he was content with only Kakashi knowing it for the time being. Believe me, it took the last of my chakra, Sasuke, and I had to take a soldier pill to replenish my lost stores. I was literally crawling after doing that. Naruto lied unconvincingly. If he had one thing common in both lives, it was that he could not lie to save his life. Fortunately, Sasuke swallowed up that lame excuse but Sakura looked sceptical still. 
but one look from Kakashi told her to drop the matter. Kakashi stared hard at Sasuke. Naruto will use Mokutan only in the direst of situations so do not bother him about it. It is not something to be used frivolously, as it is the most sacred and coveted of Kanaha's bloodlines. Clear. Sasuke nodded again. Naruto heaved a sigh of relief. He could now practice his ninjutsu without fear of discovery by Kanaha's higher echelons. Tajuna turned to Naruto and spoke, is wood not easily combustible? That bridge can be burnt down easily. Naruto replied nonchalantly, relax, Tajuna-san. That bridge is as durable as stone and about as combustible. So you need not worry about it. Tajuna was convinced. He bowed low to Naruto. You are a hero to Nami, Naruto-san. My capabilities must not be revealed, Tajuna-san. This is all I demand for my services. Can you deliver? I swear, Naruto-san. Your secret is safe with me and my family. Naruto nodded. One day later. Naruto opened his eyes, stopping his meditation. He was currently trying to bring back the purity and potency his chakra had back in his other life. That would take him at least another three to four years, by which time he estimated that his old capacity too would return. But what made Naruto shiver in excitement was that his growth would not stop there. Oh no, it would continue at the rate of an Uzumaki and a Senjo, which he knew was astronomical. He grinned excitedly. His chakra capacity this time would be much higher than his chakra capacity as Hashirama which was a truly frightening prospect. In the age of the founding Kaja, Hashirama was said to be the foremost Kaja. He had enough strength to casually calm the rage of nine Baijuya simultaneously. They called him the strongest shinobi to exist since the Rakota Senin. That strength multiplied by two, even by three. This time, he would have the strength to protect his precious ones and his village. Take that, Madara. The child in him proclaimed, which was pretty much all of him. He did used to be called frivolous and childish by the entire Senju clan. His trip to his happy place was interrupted by a bonk on his head. Turning indignantly, he saw the emo face of his teammate, Uchiha Sasuke. Dub, can I talk to you for a second? Sasuke queried with a constipated look on his face. Naruto looked closely at him. He seemed to be in discomfort. Bowel problems. The medic in him asked with concern. Sasuke looked ready to kill him. A light bulb flashed in his head. Oh, that's why he looks like that. Not easy to let go of your pride, eh, Sasuke? Sasuke seemed to have calmed down. Can you tell me how you move so fast in a battle? I know it is a ninjutsu. What is it called? Naruto looked at him in interest. A polite Sasuke? Team, it is called the Shunshin no Jutsu. Yes, you can use it too. But to use it like I do with just one seal requires absolute mastery of chakra control, or to dedicate a lot of time to the Shunshin itself. Why do you ask? Can you teach me, Dobe? In exchange, I will teach you the Grand Fireball. What do you say? Sasuke asked Naruto with that pained expression still on his face. Naruto stared at Sasuke. The child was able to fight down his own pride, Uchiha pride stoked by the village for years. If he kept up this attitude, he would become strong indeed. One sensing of Sasuke's emotions told Naruto that he was sincere, even if reluctant. He had never bothered with Kat on himself, as mastery over Dotan and Sutton was enough for him. This was perfect. This was the way to engender long-lasting camaraderie, not by some impromptu test. He made a mistake with that test, really. So, he decided. Teaching Sasuke and learning from him would be great training for the team. He would rope Sakura in as well, and teach her how to use that excellent chakra control of hers. I agree, Sasuke. I will teach you Shunshin in exchange for your fire technique. Let's get Sakura, I have a few ideas for her as well. The two of them trotted off, a tentative new bond forming between them. Naruto was quite happy inside. Sasuke was the first friend he had made in this life. Even the experience and maturity of him being Hashirama reborn did not fill the void left by lack of friends. It intensified it actually. Hashirama had thrived on friendship, love, and loyalty. Resolve filled Naruto. I will make him a powerful shinobi. 
Three days later, Naruto looked at Sasuke with satisfaction. The Uchiha could now perform Mishunshin with the proper hand seal sequence. He was quite slow with it by his standards, but it would do. Sakura had also progressed well with Genjutsu. Naruto was considering teaching her how to augment her strength with Chakra, seeing she had good control. She even had good enough control to be a good medic. But time was lacking before Gato attacked them, tried to destroy the bridge or both. Presumably he would go recruit much more powerful ninja. So he always kept his senses extended so he could sense any threats. Kakashi was being annoying as well. The Jounin had insisted on deferring to him whenever they were in private, calling him Shodei-sama. That had irritated him to no end and he had put his foot down firmly telling Kakashi that he was still Naruto, albeit one that remembered his previous life. That definitely did not change who he was at the core. Kakashi had finally understood, but insisted that they were equals at least. The thought of treating the legendary Shodei as a subordinate made him really uncomfortable. Naruto had conceded. But he had re-emphasized his point that he was the Shodei reborn into this life, so he would try to redefine himself into something more. As he looked at around at the training ground idly, an anomaly came to his attention. It seemed that a massive chakra with a water affiliation was rapidly approaching the bridges. Presumably to destroy them. Gato had made his move. Kakashi Sensei, I can sense a massive chakra with a really strong water affinity heading towards the bridges. What do you think we should do? Kakashi turned towards Naruto. How massive is the chakra, Naruto? He still fumbled with the name. I can match him, but only just. I can outlast him with my chakra control, though. Kakashi was alarmed. A ninja with as much chakra as the Shodei? Naruto must have sensed his discomfiture, for he replied. Do not worry, Kakashi Sensei. Currently I am at about a fifth of my old strength. The body of a child, even an Uzumaki child, can handle only so much chakra. I will grow back into my old strength and more in a few years. Kakashi looked relieved. It is clearly a diversionary tactic, Naruto. They hope to separate us. Naruto nodded. Kakashi continued. Gato would not hire multiple missing nin of this much strength as it would threaten his own position. So we can assume safely that this person you sensed was the only new hire. Would you check, to be sure? Naruto cast out his senses at full strength and checked seven kilometers in all directions. Except for the one he had sensed, there was no one else notable. Just the one. Kakashi started thinking aloud again. We can assume two things. One Gato's base is at least more than seven kilometers from here as you could not sense Zabuza. Naruto agreed with him. And secondly, we can now be a hundred percent sure that Gato has hired only one missing nin. How do you figure that? Naruto asked curiously. Zabuza knows that you are a sensory type, but he has no way of knowing your extraordinary range. The strongest sensor in the Seven Swordsmen had a range of three kilometers, so Zabuza would have assumed that much as well. So if you could sense no one at full strength, it means that there is indeed no one as the enemy will have underestimated your sensing range. Naruto gave Kakashi a look of respect and nodded. A great Jounin indeed. I can tell you one last thing, though. The one rushing towards the bridge is probably one of Zabuza's acquaintances as Gato does not have his fingers deep in the shinobi missing nin world, yet. Kakashi looked towards his other two students. Go on, Naruto prodded. Sakura and Sasuke had by now finished their training and were walking leisurely towards them. By your description of his massive chakra and strong water affinity, it is most likely Hashigakiki same. Naruto looked intrigued. Can you tell me more about him? I only know that he has so much chakra that he is dubbed the tailless tailed beast, and he possesses the great sword same hada which consumes the chakra of its opponents. So it would be better if you go and deal with him, while I stay here and defend Tajuna-san. Naruto understood. Kakashi had proved himself as worthy of his reputation once again. An excellent analysis, Kakashi-sensei. Now, I need to be going. Make Zabuza bite the dirt for me, will you? Kakashi chuckled and nodded. Naruto disappeared with a shunshin. Where is he going? Sakura asked. Kakashi turned to them. Gato has made his move. 
Zabuza and his accomplice will most likely attack here, so get ready. Sakura and Sasuke looked excited and nodded. Kakashi directed them to begin evacuating Tajuna and family to a safe place so they could fight the enemy unhindered. Naruto appeared on the bridge he had raised with a series of fast shunshin. A figure awaited him on the water a good distance from the bridge. He appeared before the ninja with another shunshin. In both his lives, he had never come across an odd specimen like him. Naruto contained his impulse to just start laughing out. He was blue-skinned and looked like a shark taken human form. Oh, and he wore a black cloak with red clouds stitched upon it with a porcupine-like sword slung across his shoulder. He again sensed the abundant chakra oozing from the man and saw that his earlier estimates were right. The chakra of the swordsman felt unrefined and unsubtle but was full of raw power. You look ridiculous, Naruto voiced his thoughts. This man was obviously a jutsu powerhouse. It would be a close fight. The man scowled. You are the brat Zabuza told me to be wary of? You don't look like much to me, just a short snotty Kanaha genin. Scram, brat. I have a bridge to destroy. Naruto was a little irritated at the jab to his height. He could not use Shunshin too much in this fight, as he would need all his chakra at his command at any instant. He released his chakra in an explosion of silver, causing the water to spiral around him agitatedly. His opponent grinned and released his chakra as well to much the same effect. The two steadily continued pumping more chakra into the air. The waves started getting higher and a wind blew hard in response to the agitation of the water. The man unslung his huge sword and held it in one hand. Naruto narrowed his eyes. He was strong. I am Hashigakiki Same, wielder of Same Hata. You are strong, Brett. What is your name? Naruto smiled, settling into the opening stance of the nature fist. I'm Uzumaki Naruto, genin of Kanaha. He disappeared with a burst of speed and attacked Kisame with a kick which was blocked nonchalantly with Same Hata. This ninja was good. Naruto grinned, this would be a great fight. Flaring his chakra even more he started fighting Kisame in earnest, the graceful power of the nature fist matched by the masterful kinjutsu of Kisame. Shockwaves emanated from wherever they met, causing water to fly everywhere in violent waves. Naruto was unleashing more and more strength in his blows and Kisame seemed to be blocking them all with some effort. Naruto flared his chakra even more, his blazing green eyes settling on Kisame's fish-like ones. Kisame had unwrapped the bindings on Same Hata and held it towards Naruto. They both disappeared once more, and met with a resounding impact, causing water to fly outwards in a huge circular wave. Kisame grinned as the unwrapped Same Hata absorbed the monstrous impact of Naruto's strike. Naruto sagged suddenly and looked at Same Hata in realization. Same Hata likes Chakra, brat. Allow me to feed it with yours. But Same Hata suddenly started coughing as it started going limp. Naruto wanted to laugh as he saw the sword acting sick. The stupid thing had taken in a healthy dose of his nature Chakra. Looks like Same Hata has a bad case of indigestion, Kisame, Naruto said, laughing. Kisame looked incensed, and flew back a good distance and started going through hand seals rapidly. Sutton, Bakuzu Ishiha, Kisame yelled. A humongous water wave rose from the sea and hurtled towards Naruto seeking to crush him. Naruto too gathered chakra and held out his hands in the tiger seal. Sutton, Suage in Heki, he responded. A massive water wall rose up to absorb the impact of the wave rendering Kisame's jutsu useless. Kisame stared at Naruto with a raised eyebrow as the water settled down. A jutsu like that with a single seal? Not bad, brat. You have a very strong affinity to water, I see. But Tobiramas was always a bit stronger he thought nostalgically, watching Kisame clap his hand palms together and slam one hand on the water surface. Sutton, Gaso Kuzumi. Five ferocious sharks shot towards Naruto from his palm. A cool jutsu, thought Naruto absently as he felt a large spike in Kakashi's and Sasuke's anger. His heart skipped a beat, he could no longer sense Sakura's chakra. He had to finish this fast. He held out the dragon seal and yelled out his jutsu. Sutton, Mizu no Izu Okakude. A huge whirlpool whose diameter spanned a third of the entire length of his bridge started forming around Naruto rapidly, so powerful that it even exposed a bit of the ocean floor deep beneath him. 
He seems sharks were snuffed out of existence like little gnats and the whirlpool kept on expanding ominously towards Kisame who was retreating hastily and prepared to counter with his own jutsu. Naruto heard a tremendous explosion behind him, but paid little attention to it. Naruto abruptly released his jutsu causing the water of the sea to roll around chaotically, generating powerful currents. He used the distraction to catch Kisame in his genjutsu. Kokwangayo no jutsu. Kisame suddenly flailed around blindly, caught in a genjutsu of absolute swirling darkness. He flared his chakra continuously in massive pulses, trying to break out in vain. Naruto held too firm, though, pouring most of his chakra into the bringer of darkness technique. He appeared behind the essentially blind Kisame and struck with his forefinger at a vital point on his head with great precision, knocking him out instantly. He suddenly felt unbearable pain in his back causing him to fall to one knee. He reached behind and pulled out the kunao embedded in his back. Blood flowed down his back, the wound was quite deep. His spine was nicked and only pain tolerance built over decades allowed him to think clearly. He looked up and saw a young man wearing a black cloak stitched with red clouds in the process of slinging Kisame on his back. He rooted pure medical chakra towards his injury and healed himself almost instantly, and stood up. The young man had turned to leave. As if a wound like that could keep him down. Sherry non. The young man had a sherry non. No deeper sensing told him that he possessed the main jiku as well and that it was used frequently. Uchiha Itake, Naruto said calmly. This youngster was a real enigma. He could wait a bit to talk, as he could sense that his teammates had ended their fight. A face closely resembling Sasuke's, check. Main Jikyo Sherinan most likely obtained from clan slaughter, check. The man turned around abruptly, his eyes widening at the sound of the boy who he thought was seriously injured. I thought I had neutralized you, Naruto-kun, Itaka said, his stoic face expertly hiding his emotions. You seem to be making a habit of killing unwary people, Uchiha Itake. Naruto said, silver chakra exploding from him again. The Kyuubi healed you, I assume. Let him believe that. A reasonable assumption. You are a real prodigy to have escaped my sensory perception so thoroughly. Good job. Naruto said admiringly. Itaka did not acknowledge that in any way. He studied Naruto carefully with his sherry non. You are very strong to have defeated Kisame, Naruto-kun. He was not really giving it his all, but I can see that you weren't either. Naruto's expression became cheerful, his silver chakra receding. Yeah, that was a good fight. Tell Kisame that it was fun. Itaka did not respond except to raise his eyebrow and disappear. He surveyed the damage wrought by his fight with Kisame. The trees along the coastline were all destroyed. He could repair that, no problem. He turned around completely and saw something that made his jaw drop and eyes bug out. He had destroyed the bridge he had so dramatically created with his own jutsu. That whirlpool he used against Kisame had churned his bridge to pieces. He would be the laughing stock of Team 7. He really felt like going somewhere private and banging his head repeatedly on a wall. He should have made the wood of the bridge a little more chakra resistant, he thought sadly. But that would have aroused suspicions among Shinobi that a Mokudan user walked the lands again. It would completely destroy the rumors Kakashi had planted about his multiple shadow clones building a bridge in two days. Deciding to forget this embarrassment, he shunshined quickly towards Tajuna's house. He had been relieved when he had faintly felt Sakura's life force. He could heal almost any injury, except death. A week later. A fully recuperated Team 7 waved one last time to the people of Nami, Tajuna, and family at the forefront of the huge group, and began walking back to Kanaha contentedly. Tajuna's bridge was complete. Naruto had refused to rebuild his wood bridge, saying that the hope of Nami had to be created by its people alone. Thus they had named the bridge after Team 7, all their names engraved upon its arch. He had briefly told Kakashi how he had defeated Kisame and confronted Itake, alarming the man greatly. Naruto wanted to make speculations and give details only when they were back in the presence of the Sandaime. Some secrets were too sensitive. The fight with Zabuza had gone well resulting in the death of both Zabuza and his accomplice, who he learned was called Haku. What a waste, Naruto thought. The last Hayatan user lost to the world. Evidently Sasuke and Haku had formed a bond before the fight, 
without Sasuke knowing Haku's true identity. When Sakura was put into a near-death state by a masked Haku, Sasuke had awakened his Sharingan and engaged Haku. He had managed to counter the Hayaton user's assault and break open his mask. Sasuke had refused to strike a final blow against one he counted a friend. Haku had died to protect Zabuza from Kakashi's rakery. Geto had then assailed the entire group with his thugs. So Sasuke and Zabuza, the latter moved deeply by Haku's sacrifice, had together finished off the entire thug army albeit with a little help from the villagers. Zabuza too succumbed to his wounds and was buried alongside Haku. The entire ordeal had changed Sasuke's attitude, igniting in him the will of fire and wiping out the last of his hatred. Naruto could see it only too clearly. With Sasuke fighting alongside him, they would be able to do together what he could not do with Madara. Chapter 4 See you later. Naruto waved to his teammates. They had just returned to Kanaha from a very educational mission in Wave Country. Kakashi and Naruto made their way towards the Hokage Tower leisurely. Will you tell the third everything, Kakashi asked Naruto. I will. He could pick up signs of deception extremely well even as a boy, and I am not really good at deceiving my precious people. Truth is the strongest weapon, Kakashi Sensei. Lies can be twisted against you always as you may know from your own experience as a shinobi. Kakashi nodded as they stood in front of the Sandaimeo's secretary. We are here to report the success of our mission to the third. Kakashi stated lazily. The secretary gave her customary dirty glance to Naruto and went to find out if the third was free. Doesn't it bother you, the way you are treated in the village? Kakashi asked Naruto regretfully. He had to have been there for the boy, but it was impossible. The village had needed every ninja on call to recover from the Kyuubi attack and Naruto would have been as good as neglected in Kakashi's home. Not really. As Naruto the child, I learned to disregard the glares of the people though it really caused me unutterable sadness. But now, I really feel sad for the village I founded. They are just like sheep, unwilling and unable to think for themselves. That was not my intention for the shinobi of Kanaha. The secretary came back. The Sandaime will see you now. Naruto followed Kakashi into the office of the third Hokage. The more Naruto saw this place, the more he felt the change Kanaha had undergone. This office which had exuded a sense of loyalty and patriotism to the village during his reign, now gave off a sense of bureaucratic power mongering. Hiruzen. His student had sacrificed much for the sake of the village, but one glance at him told Naruto that he was weary. The will of fire burned in him still, but the village had asked too much of this man, he had given up family, love, and much more for Kanaha. Hiruzen, at least, was everything he had hoped to see in the future generation. Report, Kakashi, the third ordered, looking at Naruto and Kakashi with a discerning eye. Hi, Sandai Mesama, nodded Kakashi, and began his report. On the road to Nami, we were attacked by the demon brothers of Kiri who were dealt with easily by Sasuke and Sakura. Turns out that Tajuna was lying about the mission. Kakashi related the events of the mission up to when Zabuza attacked them on the bridge and Naruto drove him off. Hiruzen looked surprised. How do you know those jutsus, Naruto? Naruto took a deep breath. Old man, this is private. Very confidential. I suggest you send off the forum boo guarding you. It is only for your ears and will only take a moment. Hiruzen signaled, sending off the umbu. If he couldn't trust Naruto, he could trust no one. Naruto went to the wall behind Hiruzen's desk and placed his hand on it, watched carefully by Hiruzen and an amused Kakashi. He flared his chakra and caused a glowing seal array to appear on the wall. Hiruzen's eyes grew wide and he stared at Naruto with the full authority of a battle-hardened warrior. How can you know the existence of those seals, Naruto? How can you use them? Naruto unleashed the full might of his chakra, causing cracks to appear on the wall and the plastering to peel off. Hiruzen's table was cracking up. It felt as smothering, as if the air itself had thickened. Kakashi found it difficult to breathe as he stared with awe at the Shodei Hokage unleashing his chakra. And to think it was only a fraction of his strength. Hiruzen had his hand upon his heart as he felt a chakra he thought he would never feel again in his life. It was impossible, he convinced himself. It was impossible for Naruto to have nearly the exact same chakra as his beloved departed sensei. But the boy's actions spoke different. 
he had activated that seal. The seal array on the wall glowed a blinding white and the room lurched violently causing its three occupants to stick their feet to the ground with chakra to stay firm. The light receded and Naruto turned to look at Hiruzen with an expression of compassion and pride on his face. It is safe to talk. Hiruzen stared hard at Naruto, disbelief written clearly upon his face. How is this possible, you should not even know of that seal's existence. No one should, except the Hokage. Naruto smiled. I will answer you, Sandaime. When the mistake happened with the sealing of the Kyuubi into my infant body dash. How do you know of the Kyuubi? Hiruzen asked, alarmed. I know about my parents too. As I said to Kakashi I spoke to the Kyuubi. Please, Sandaime, listen to the rest. Hiruzen nodded, withholding his turbulent emotions at the sudden onslaught of information. Go on, I will withhold my questions for now. The mistake awakened a new aspect for me. I found myself remembering my previous life, old man. That should be impossible, but it happened. I think you can deduce the rest, can't you? Naruto said looking at the wondrous realization blooming on the Hokage's face. Hashirama-sama. Hiruzen asked with a hushed voice, his eyes shining. Naruto looked at Hiruzen with happiness and nodded. I am him, but I am Naruto as well. I think you can appreciate the merging of my two lives better than anyone, as you knew me intimately in both lives. I am proud of you, Hiruzen. Kakashi looked at the reunion between sensei and student with his hairs standing on end. He was watching history unfold here in this room. Two of Kanaha's greatest figures, who should have met again only in the afterlife, stood facing each other in the most unlikely reunion of all. Sarutobi Hiruzen was lost for words. He sat dumbly, staring with awe at the legendary first. That is how you could activate the seal. I guess I have no choice but to believe you, Hashirama-sama, or Naruto, what should I call you? I am Naruto, Hiruzen. I should never have remembered my old life normally. It was a one in a million chance, and it happened to me. I am Naruto who remembers his old life as Hashirama. I am both Hashirama and Naruto in essence. Hiruzen stared at his mentor as he described himself. He could see both Naruto and the Shodei in the boy. This is most unexpected. Forgive me, Sandaime-sama. What was that seal Naruto just activated? Sarutobi cleared his throat. It is a most advanced seal created by Mito-sama and Tobirama-sensei for Hashirama-sama's use. It was attuned to his chakra and his chakra alone. This is irrefutable proof of Naruto's claims. Kakashi looked at Naruto, seeing as the Sandaime was off on a mental tangent. Why is it safe to talk after the seal was activated? Naruto's eyes glazed over as he recalled the memories of past days. My wife Mito and my brother Tobirama made that seal for me to insulate the Hokage's office totally from the outside world. It is a space-time seal. The way Tobirama explained it to me, it transports those occupants of the room I choose into the space between moments. Kakashi looked confused. What does that even mean? Don't ask me, Tobirama and Mito-chan designed that thing. It was Tobirama who was always into things like space-time techniques, and my wife's mastery over seals was unheard of even during the age of founders. Kakashi still looked quizzical. Fine, all I really understand is this, as long as I hold this seal active whatever happens between the chosen occupants of this office for that duration will happen in a single instant of the flow of time in the world outside, effectively sealing the required conversation completely from the outside world. Kakashi looked at the clock, which had frozen. But on close observation with Sherry Nan he could see that the second hand was moving very slowly. Kakashi I smiled. Now I understand. To be able to do something like that, not even Sensei would have been able to do that. Hiruzen who had come out of his funk shook his head in disagreement. Minato was just tapping into his potential and had invented the Hiration no Jutsu as a teenager. I think he would have surpassed Tobirama Sensei if he were to still live. Naruto could feel the drain on his chakra as he held the seal active. Hiruzen let us get on with it please. I think I can hold the seal for another quarter hour maximum. I don't yet have the amount of chakra I possessed as Hashirama and this seal is very draining. Let me tell you of what happened in wave from my perspective. 
Naruto launched into a narrative of how he had drove off Zabuza the first time, and how he had defeated Kisame. He also told the Hokage of how he had confronted Sasuke's brother. You need to tell me what is up with that attack a kid later, Hiruzen. He is really not the sort to kill needlessly from what I sensed of him. I can smell something wrong with the entire Uchiha affair. Hiruzen sighed sadly. You are right. The Uchiha slaughter was not the work of a maniacal shinobi. I will tell you of it later. Naruto nodded. We will need to speak of my mother as well, but we do not need the seal active for that anyway. It is my right to have that information. Kakashi interjected smoothly. I believe our time is running out. Let me complete my report. Kakashi finally finished relating his part of the mission. This is troubling indeed. I must ask Jiraiya of the connection between Ataki and Kisame and their similar clothing. It implies that they are part of an organization, and any organization that employs such powerful ninja is to be treated with caution. Naruto agreed completely. I have to release the seal soon, Hiruzen. Is there anything else that is to be confined to this room, anyone? Kakashi and Hiruzen shook their heads. One last thing, Hiruzen. Let me tell you that I am truly proud of you. But do not worry, I will get that head back from you in no time. Hiruzen looked ten years younger after the day's happenings. You deserve it more than I do, Hashirama-sama. You have become a great shinobi in Hokage, Hiruzen. You fought for Kanaha all this time and sacrificed much for my legacy to continue. You have more experience in this world than me, and I will not disregard that. Don't get any idea of just handing over that hat to me, though. I will earn it rightfully as Naruto. Hiruzen gave a true smile. I should have expected that. I understand, Naruto. You can release the seal. Naruto deactivated the seal with a sigh of relief and the room lurched again, denoting them slipping back into the true flow of time. To the umbu outside it had just been two seconds. Naruto now looked at Hiruzen seriously. Tell me of why my mother left old man. I need to know. Please tell me. Hiruzen looked sad. I will tell you, Naruto. It is a long story, and I need you to listen carefully. You do know of the reputation of the fourth, don't you? Naruto nodded impatiently. Alongside the fourth fought a Kunoichi almost as strong as him. It was your mother, Uzumaki Kushina also known as the Red Death of Kanaha. Together the couple were so strong that they ended the third war almost by themselves. Naruto knew all this, but listened proudly as Hiruzen described his parents. They were strong indeed. Your father's name was feared in IWA beyond anything else. Namikaze Minato single-handedly destroyed an army of IWA shinobi by his Hiration no Jutsu, earning him the name of Yellow Flash of Kanaha, as all that the enemies of Kanaha saw was a glimpse his yellow hair before he killed them in the hundreds. Your mother however, inspired the same fear in Kumo. When Minato was engaged with the Naoraikaja of Kumo A who was then a Jounin, the army of Kumo which had assaulted Kanaha was free to rampage through our thinly spread forces. Kushina then arrived on the battlefield and annihilated the entire army. She too was extremely fast and a master of Kenjutsu. Kushina's long red hair flying as she flashed through the battlefield and she cut down her enemies earned her the name Red Death. Naruto listened closely as Hiruzen continued. The war was ended after some time, and none of the other villages dared to aggravate Kanaha again fearing our strength. Your mother was pregnant with you after marrying Minato in a ceremony known only to the Council of Kanaha and its high-ranking shinobi. You know of the consequences of the Kyuubi affair better than I, Minato was dead, and Kushina was barely alive. Her Izumaki resilience was not for nothing though, and she made a full recovery in another two months during which time you were placed under the care of Uchiha Mikato. So Sasuke and he shared a very personal past. Sasuke felt even more like a brother to Naruto after hearing this. The Sandaime continued. The moment she recovered fully, she took you back and began to raise you. But when you were about half a year old, IWA got word of your existence as did Kumo. To this day we do not know how the leak happened. Anyway, something terrible began to happen in consequence. There were nearly daily assassination attempts made on you, sometimes causing you terrible wounds. But you always healed yourself. It was the fox's chakra. Thanks for that, Kurama. Naruto thought gratefully. 
Think nothing of it, Hashirama. You are the best vessel I ever had, you know. Even as an infant your chakra calmed me and made me think of my days as a young kid. Naruto smiled, motioning for Hiruzen to continue. Your mother always thwarted those attempts. We tried to impose sanctions upon Kumo and IWA but they always denied their actions. Kanaha was weary of war and they had lost their beloved Yondai so morale was at a low. We were still recovering from the Kyuubi attack. Hiruzen looked really sad at this point. However one day when you were about a year and a half, an assassin stabbed you right through your gut. The assassin was killed of course, but it left your mother absolutely distraught. She had lost her husband whom she loved, and she had seen her darling son nearly die. She then reached a conclusion. Naruto looked at the old man, his emotions churning. He could hardly remember these events. It was her and Minato's reputation that brought down such hatred against you. You would never be safe as long as you were associated with her. She had too many enemies. So she came to me with a plan. Though it broke her heart completely, she had to let you fade into anonymity and outside her life. Nami Kaze Naruto would be killed in an assassination staged by Kanaha itself and Uzumaki Naruto would be quietly enrolled in an orphanage. The plan went perfectly. Naruto was now unsure of what to think. So he asked questions. What happened to my mother then? The third side. She accepted a series of S-class missions outside Kanaha to draw attention to her and away from you. I was to call her back only when I felt that you were strong enough to defend yourself. I think she lost a piece of her soul back then. Naruto looked down sadly. He understood what had happened and hated the necessity for it, hated the circumstances. Now that I know you are strong enough, I will call her back. Do not judge her too harshly Naruto. She sacrificed even your love for her to keep you safe, and that is a great sacrifice indeed. Naruto sighed. He did understand and deeply respected and admired Kushina's actions. But the suffering he had endured without her still lingered in the depths of his mind. He could not help but slightly resent her. But as the reborn Shode, he could view the situation objectively. Kushina had indeed chosen the option that was most feasible, and the choice had to be made fast anyway. He could empathize as he had made many such choices in the first war. He needed to sort his feelings out a little more. When will she be back? Naruto asked Hiruzen. Within a fortnight. You will be reunited with her in a fortnight. Please treat her at least civilly Naruto, she has suffered deeply. Being reunited with her son will heal at least a part of her. Naruto nodded. You have given me much to think about, old man. I need to go so saying Naruto walked out with a thoughtful face. Kakashi looked at Sandaima. He will be far greater than even the Shode Hokage, won't he Hiruzen-sama? Hiruzen smiled brightly. He will indeed. Three days later. Naruto walked leisurely with Sakura and Sasuke. They had just been told by Kakashi that they were nominated for the Chiyunin exams and could make the choice whether or not to compete. All of them had decided to say yes. They were to come to the academy tomorrow where the first test would be administered. He had thought hard on the issue of his mother and decided that she was a great Kunoichi and mother. Anyway, he felt no real need for a parental figure now, so what resentment he would feel at her was lessened. He would wait to meet her and then see. He felt a tug on his consciousness. What, Karama? Hashirama, I definitely feel the presence of at least one Baijuyu. There might be another as well. I think it has to do with how well they are sealed. The one I sensed for sure is the Ichibai no Shukaku. Be careful. Naruto flared his senses and could clearly feel the presence of Shukaku's Jinhiraki just around the corner. The chakra of the container felt too chaotic to him, so he could conclude only one thing. The container was losing his sanity. He assumed it was due to a weak sealing method. He suddenly felt a spike of the container's bloodlust. They would damage nothing in Kanaha on his watch. Thanks for the advice, Karama. He turned to his teammates I sense trouble in the next street. Foreign ninja. Do you want to come with me? We might meet some of the competition early. They nodded. The three of them walked purposefully towards the source of the commotion and saw what looked like a clown bullying a kid. A kid that Naruto recognized as Hiruzen's grandson, Kano Amaru. 
He walked towards the clown and called out to him. What do you want? Said the clown in what was meant to be an intimidating tone. Let the kid go, my friend. That is the Sandaima Hokage's grandson you are so busily bullying. It is not considered polite for visiting ninja to assault the relatives of the village's Kaja, is it? Naruto said calmly. The blonde girl turned to the clown, Kankura, let the kid go. Imagine what would happen if Gara finds us fooling around. The clown called Kankura gave an involuntary shiver. His face then hardened, all right, to marry. I will let the kid go if he begs for my forgiveness. Naruto looked at the boy exasperatedly. Sasuke stepped up and performed a fast series of hand seals. Shunshin no Jutsu. He disappeared, and only appeared on the other side some distance from the group, holding Kano Amaru who he set back on the ground. Kankura's and Tamari's eyes bugged out. The kid was fast. Naruto could sense the Jinhira key of Shukaka within their proximity. Obviously he was trying to hide, suppressing his chakra as much as possible. That would not work on sensory type ninja. Come out, Ichibai no Jinhira key. Naruto said, looking directly at Gara's hiding spot. Tamari and Kankura turned pale. The blonde knew Gara's secret. This put the entire plan at jeopardy. They had to inform Baki sensei of this development as soon as possible. Naruto could sense the anxiety and tension of the two in front of him. It was not normal. Either these two feared the mistreatment of their teammate, or it was something else. A red-headed kid with bags under his eyes appeared in front of Naruto. He studied the blonde for a bit and turned to his teammates. You have disgraced Sunagakura by your actions, Kankura. Now come both of you, we are leaving. But Gara Dash, Kankura opened his mouth and stopped when killing intent flooded the entire street. Shut up or I'll kill you. Kankura shut his mouth after that. What is your name? Asked Sasuke. Who, me? Tamari said bashfully. The dark-haired boy was very attractive, as was the blonde. But there was something about the blonde that transcended them all, something different. Even Gara felt that. No, the one with the gourd, Sasuke clarified. I am Sabaku no Gara. I am interested in learning your names as well. He looked at Sasuke and Naruto. Uchiha Sasuke. Uzumaki Naruto. I look forward to fighting you. Mother thirsts for your blood, Uchiha. And yours as well Uzumaki. She craves yours said Gara ominously before leaving with his teammates. Sakura went to Kano Amaru to confirm if he was alright to which the boy nodded. The honored grandson then started ranting about Sasuke's and Naruto's awesomeness. It was obvious to Naruto that the kid was starting to idolize Team 7. Shukaku made his Jinhiraki think he was his mother? What happened to that raccoon? He was always a little on the loose side, but this is too much even for him. Karama sniggered. Naruto though was a strange mix of emotions. He wanted to help his fellow Jinhiraki but could not do that as Shukaku would immediately recognize him as Hashirama. He could hardly let his secret out so easily. The poor kid would have to control the Baijuyu himself, which meant he had to realize love and conquer hatred. That would be tough for him from what he saw. It would be nigh impossible with the Shukaku passing himself off as the kid's mother, of all things. He started laughing out loud at that joined by Kurama in his mind, causing Sasuke and Sakura to look at him strangely. What's wrong with you, Dobe? Nothing Sasuke. Um, I need to go and train, see you tomorrow at the academy for the first round. Still laughing quietly to themselves, Baijuyu and Jinhiraki made their way back home. Naruto sat happily on a seat in his beloved ramen shop, Ichiraku Ramen Bar. He was currently in the process of scarfing down his eleventh bowl of the precious dish. Ayam turned to him and asked. You really have to stop eating so much, Naruto. It's not good for you, you know. I bet that if I stab you right now with my fork, you will bleed ramen soup. Naruto did not reply and began to stuff his mouth with his twelfth bowl of the dish. He had definitely not lost his love for ramen after his awakening. Oh no, it had definitely increased. Do you really have to stuff yourself like that? Came a female voice to his right. Glancing, he saw two blonde females eating ramen sedately. Both had strong chakras, one with Raiden and the other with both Raiden and Katon. 
They both seemed to be mildly irritated. The chakra of the one who had spoken to him felt familiar in a strange sort of way. He sensed deeper. Matatabi. Came the hugely surprised voice of Kurama. Naruto started. What was it with all these Jinhiraki popping up in Kanaha at the same time? He looked at the Nyabai Jinhiraki. Who are you? I am Nia Yujito, and this is Samui. We are Kunoichi from Kyumagaku are here for the Chiyunin exams along with our other team member, Amwa. I am Uzumaki Naruto, Naruto introduced himself. Samui just waved at him. Naruto waved back at her enthusiastically and focused on Yujito. You are special, aren't you Yujito-san? Yujito narrowed her eyes at him. You too are special, Naruto-san. A sensory type, are you? Naruto asked her, surprised. So are you. Let us walk together. Samui, I am out Yujito said her teammate. Naruto and Yujito walked out of the ramen shop, Naruto waving goodbye to Ayam. Nice to meet you, Nyabaijin Hiraki. Naruto greeted her, looking at her properly. She was quite pretty, not that he was attracted to her. Her chakra felt extremely strong, filled with pure power that was beyond most humans. A Jinhiraki in control of her by Jiryu. Nice to meet you as well, Kyuabi Jinhiraki. Yujito chuckled. How could you sense the Kyuabi? Its chakra is suppressed by mine at all times. Naruto queried. It is suppressed quite well, Naruto-san. But I am not Kyumo's strongest sensor for nothing. I assume you met Ichibai. Of course. Careful of him, he is slightly crazy and will slaughter anything in his path living or otherwise. I didn't sense any other Jinhiraki in this exam, did you? No I believe it is just the three of us. See you later, Naruto-san. We have a team meeting about now, let's meet in the exams. See you. Naruto waved back, watching her thoughtfully. He had no doubt Sarutobi knew of these developments. Three Jinhiraki competing in a Chiyunin exam? He had to be on his guard and watch out for Kanaha's sake. The next day, Naruto stared exasperatedly as Sasuke accepted a challenge to fight from a weird green spandex wearing genin called Rock Lee. They had successfully detected a genjutsu on the entrance to the exam antechamber and Sasuke had in his usual style attacked the door guards. But their fight was interrupted by Rock Lee who caught them with his superior speed. Naruto sensed little chakra in the kid, so he concluded that his speed was pure taijutsu. The work that must have taken... The kid had his utmost respect for his hard work. He was a genius of hard work indeed. Though Sasuke had lost much of his drive for vengeance in Wave, he still kept most of his pride as an Uchiha. Elite. So he was currently headed behind Rock Lee to fight him in a more open space. Naruto had a feeling that Sasuke would get a rude awakening. They stood opposite each other in the hall, Naruto and Sakura watching interestedly. Lee extended his palm, bending his fingers. I will prove to you that hard work is superior to genius, Uchiha Sasuke. I am the strongest genin in Kanaha he said, and proceeded to do just that. He absolutely pummeled Sasuke, kicking him all over the place. Sasuke could see the kicks but could not keep up with his body. Lee suddenly unwrapped his hand's bandage, yelling. I will show you the meaning of effort with this move, Sasuke-kun, and leapt into the air. Lee. Came the voice of a, tortoise? and an older clone of Lee. You were told not to use that move. Lee who was back on the ground stared with a devastated expression, crying anime tears. I am sorry, Gai-sensei. I only wanted to prove myself. I accept any punishment you give me. This is your punishment, my student. Yelled Gai-sensei and appeared before Lee and gave him a devastating punch. Lee then walked back from his crater, and stood opposite Guy. I am sorry, Gai-sensei. Lee exclaimed. It is alright, my precious student, you were only trying to show the flames of your youth. I can understand youth better than anyone. And to the horror of Team 7, Lee and Guy flew into each other's arms causing a sunset to appear with waves washing up to them. Kai yelled Team 7 in unison, but it was in vain. The sunset did not break until the weird duo had disengaged from their hug. Guy just appeared before them again with stunning speed. You are the youthful students of Kakashi, aren't you? 
How do you know Kakashi-sensei? Sakura questioned Guy warily. He is my youthful and eternal rival. Currently the score stands in my favor. Well, youthful students of Kakashi it is time for the first round. Good luck. So saying Guy disappeared. Lee left as well but had a word of advice for Sasuke. I am not really the strongest genin in Konoha, Sasuke-kun. That would be my teammate Hyuga Neji. Be wary of him. Sasuke snorted derisively. However strong this Neji was, he was sure that no genin in Konoha even held a candle to Naruto. We need to go, Sasuke. Came Naruto's voice. Sasuke just nodded and followed him into the waiting chamber. The first thing he could sense was a multitude of rather weak chakras. He looked around carefully and evaluated the potential threats. Gara, as usual felt strong, as did Yujito whom he acknowledged with a wave of his hand. Yujito smiled back. There was another team from a new village he heard was called Sound that had entered a team. They too felt moderately strong, their emotions felt dark as well. But one person truly caught his attention. An unassuming genin wearing a Kanaha headband was quietly rearranging a deck of cards. This person was actively suppressing his chakra, but he could not escape from Naruto's acute sensory capabilities. This genin felt of deception and he had at least Jounin level chakra. Naruto leisurely walked towards him. Hey there, who are you and what are those cards about? The genin smiled at him, but it felt all wrong to Naruto. I am Yakushi Kabuto, and I am a genin of Kanaha. I have taken these exams seven times and have gathered information on the competition in these Nininfo cards. Would you like any information on your opposition, Uzumaki Naruto? Naruto smiled pleasantly and shook his head. But Sasuke queried. I would like information on Gara of the Sand, Yujito Nii, Rock Lee, and Hyuga Neji. You even know their names? That will make this easy. Gara, yes, 10 B ranks and 30 C ranks, not even a scratch on him and has strong ninjutsu. Everybody's eyes widened. Nii Yujito, great Taijutsu, powerful ninjutsu, Akuno Ichi to watch out for. Her mission stats are unknown. Naruto looked at Yujito curiously. The Nyabaijin Hiroki winked at him. Finally we have Hyuga Neji and Rock Lee both on Team Guy. 33 D-rank and 5 C-rank missions completed. Rock Lee is a powerful Taijutsu specialist, ninjutsu unknown. Hyuga Neji is a known prodigy of the Jiyukin style and a strong competitor. Naruto just glanced at them all. They were all quite powerful for Genin. He could feel killer intent coming from the team from Sound. Playtime is over. Now it is time for the first round of the Chiyunin exams, brats. Follow me. Came the gruff voice of a burly Scarface examiner who gave off an air of extreme intimidation. They nervously followed Scarface into a spacious hall full of desks. I am Marino Ibiki. First round will be a written round. You need to answer at least one question to pass and there will be nine questions. At the end of the examination, there will also be a tenth question the rules for which will be defined on the spot. The genin just stared at him, surprised at the strange rules. There will be observers for this test, and if you are caught more than five times you will be disqualified. Clear. They all nodded. Then let us get started. Naruto stared at their newest proctor, a kunoichi named Midarashi Anko who was passing around waivers of death for the genin to sign. They were to enter the forest of death with a scroll and survive there for three days. Their objective was to get a scroll, heaven, or earth, to complete their set. With both scrolls, they were to head for the tower to complete the test. Great, I get to see what has happened to my forest. The first exam was quite innovative, really. Ibiki had put together a good information gathering test, as the questions were all well above genin level. He had cleverly planted a few Chiyunin test takers from whom the genin were expected to gather information. The ways of gathering information too really surprised him. He of course could answer all the questions. They were too simple to him. Sasuke had predictably used Cherry Nan, the Hyuga their Byakugan and Sakura of course actually knew the answers to the questions. Gara though had used an innovative trick, he made an eye out of sand to spy on the others. That left him impressed. The Jin Hiroki was good. Ibiki had ended their party though, asking if they were confident enough to take the tenth question. 
Those who answered the question wrong would never be Chiyunin, he said. Those who left right then would have a shot next year. To Naruto it was obvious that it was a test of confidence, so he stayed right where he was. Most of the competitors had stayed too. Ibiki then ended the test abruptly, saying they had all passed. Apparently, the question he had asked just then was the mysterious tenth question and the remaining had all proved that they were worthy of continuing with their conviction in remaining. Putting off thoughts of the first exam, he glanced at Midarashi Anko. This Konoichi's chakra felt essentially the same as Kabuto's. That was intriguing, what was the connection between those two? His attention was occupied suddenly by Akusa Kunoichi who handed Anko back her dagger. Her chakra felt full of malice. What was more, her chakra felt a bit like his own. Just what was such a shinobi doing in the Chiyunin exams? She easily had Kaja level chakra. No, that was no normal genin and she seemed to be shooting unhealthy glances at Sasuke. They would need to be careful with that Kunoichi. She was a real danger, unlike these other children. Be careful of that Kusa Kunoichi, Sasuke. She seems really strong. Sasuke turned to him and nodded discreetly. Sakura just looked intimidated. All right, brats. It is time for you to begin. Enter the forest through your designated gates, now. Anko yelled. They shot through their designated gates, entering the forest in rapid blurs. Naruto signaled them to stop after about half an hour of traveling. We are deep enough into the forest, and we really need a plan. What do you say we do? Sakura spoke, I say we follow the river. We have a heaven scroll, and we may encounter some team eventually as they too would naturally gravitate towards the river. We can take the scroll from them easily by ambush as we have a sensor on our team. An excellent plan. Sasuke said, nodding to Sakura causing her to blush. Thus they had moved steadily finding and following the river on its course. Naruto was impressed, his forest had grown quite a bit. The trees seemed to recognize him, and a warm comforting feeling filled the air as he walked by them. It had been a day since the beginning of the second exam and Naruto was getting alarmed. He could sense not even a single team on their path, and that was fishy. Naruto turned to his teammates. I find it odd that we have not been attacked at all, and I can sense no one in our vicinity. I don't like this. Sasuke nodded. I too can feel it. Something feels wrong about how easy all this is becoming. Sakura looked worried. Naruto decided to just pause and consider their next move. They were just about out of rations, but still had plenty of water. He decided. We need more rations. You know I can get fruits enough for the journey. Sasuke nodded. But we need to agree on something only the three of us know, in case we are impersonated by someone. Naruto just had the perfect thing. We say the name of my most secret technique, what do you say? Sakura agreed. That should work. All right then, time for me to go. Said Naruto and vanished. Naruto reached a clearing not the far away from his teammates and threw around his senses for any eavesdroppers or spies. Nothing. Mokuton, Ringo no ki no tato. A good-sized apple tree with luscious apples rose up from the earth causing Naruto to grin. A well-placed punch later, Naruto was happily collecting dozens of apples that fell on the ground. This would do for the remaining duration of their stay. His mokuton was truly powerful, be it to heal or to destroy. His senses suddenly perked up. Heading towards him was a good-sized chakra that felt distinctly, slimy. It did not feel even remotely human. So it had to be a summons. Naruto put aside his sack and awaited the hostile summons that was about to attack him. Sure enough, he heard something crashing through the trees in front of him. He waited patiently. With a thunderous crash, the summons broke through the trees in front of him and lunged. Naruto avoided easily enough with a well-timed Shunshin no Jutsu. He examined the huge snake in front of him. There were only two recorded snake summoners, one was Midarashi Anko, the crazy proctor, and the second. Oh no. The snake son in Orochimaru was here. The only reason he would bother to send a snake against him was to separate him from Sasuke and Sakura. Damn, he knew there was something about that Kusa ninja. Sure enough, he felt Sasuke's absolute fear and Sakura's numbness. He must be attacking them even now. 
he had to get there and stop the sun in as soon as possible but first. Dotan, Yomi Nuuma. A deep swamp formed beneath the snake and swallowed it up easily. He dimly heard Sasuke scream. His anger skyrocketed, and he began radiating his chakra as he ran to Sasuke's aid with a series of shunshin. What he saw disgusted him. Sakura was paralyzed with fear and Orochimaru was retracting his elongated neck from Sasuke's where he had bitten him. Naruto calmed himself and appeared behind Sasuke. Placing the first two fingers of his right hand, he felt for Sasuke's chakra. It was corrupted. He could see a seal forming on Sasuke's neck and it was faintly red in color. He was no seal master even if he was adequately proficient in the sealing arts. Sasuke's ailment required attention and care neither of which he had now. A makeshift solution had to do for now. Kukukuku. Thus enters a new player. I thought I had you with that snake I had sent, Naruto-kun. Orochimaru said, amused. Naruto paid no attention to the slimy sun in as he stabilized Sasuke with medical chakra. Orochimaru just watched interestedly, making no move to stop him. Sasuke was breathing a much easier. Now to take care of that troublesome seal. Naruto gathered up his chakra to his fingertips, forming five kanji characters for sealing. Orochimaru's eyes widened. No. That would waste all his effort. He gathered his chakra and appeared before Naruto intending to stop him. But before he could do anything, the sealing was done. Fuinjutsu, Fujihawan. Orochimaru's seal was surrounded by an outpouring of other characters. That would contain the snake's corruption for the time being. Orochimaru kicked out too late at Naruto, but Naruto stopped his leg nonchalantly with one hand. He faced the enraged sun in and tossed him so hard into the tree beside him that it shook. Hello, Orochimaru. Chapter 5 Hello, Orochimaru. Naruto greeted the sun in flatly. Orochimaru shook himself out of his daze, seeming stunned at being cast aside so easily by a genin. He looked at Naruto with rage contorting his face. He walked slowly towards Naruto, trying to assess him. You are no genin, Uzumaki Naruto. To know the Fujihoin, to defeat my summons so easily and not to mention, stopping my kick so casually, you have much power. Why not join me? Naruto's forest green eyes met Orochimaru's snake-like ones. Thank you for the offer, Orochimaru. But no, I am content here. You however attacked my comrade and nearly killed him, so. Naruto appeared in front of Orochimaru and kicked him with tremendous force sending the sun in hurtling back into the forest for about a mile, crashing through the trees and foliage. Sakura stared at Naruto disbelievingly, finally out of her mental paralysis. Defeating Zabuza easily was nothing, but matching a sun in just as easily. Naruto started to leak Mokutan Chakra, a faint silver shroud around his body. He turned to Sakura. Sakura, take Sasuke and get up onto the highest tree here. This fight will be harmful to you if you stay at ground level. Sasuke will wake up any moment now. Sakura couldn't move. This was getting too much for her. I can sense Orochimaru returning, Sakura. Move now. Shaken out of her daze, Sakura went on to follow Naruto's instructions and took Sasuke to the highest tree in the vicinity. It was far enough from Naruto that she would be safe from collateral damage, but still near enough to keep him in view. Naruto waited patiently for Orochimaru to show himself. So strong. Orochimaru said, appearing in front of Naruto. The Kusa Konoichi's face was peeling to reveal his true one. He ripped it off entirely and stood before Naruto as the snake sunin. Tell me Naruto-kun, how is it you have the Shodei Hokage's chakra? Its potency puts even my chakra to shame. Naruto looked at Orochimaru in amusement. It was too much to hope that my kick put you down, wasn't it? You were Hiruzen's prized student after all. Naruto pondered, sampling Orochimaru's chakra deeply. You defiled the grave of the Shodei, didn't you Orochimaru, you filthy traitor? You took his cells unto yourself thinking to match his strength. Pieces of the forest floor were rising around Orochimaru in the wake of his anger. The snake sun hit his rage well, but Naruto could taste it in the chakra he emanated. You forgot something, Orochimaru. The first's true strength was the will of fire, his power was only a tool and not who he was, 
You wouldn't understand would you, you slimy traitor. Naruto was letting his cynical side show now, seeing that his words were getting to Orochimaru. A loathsome scowl marred Orochimaru's face. I will obliterate you, Uzumaki Naruto. You have thwarted me for the last time. Naruto smirked, seeing the sheer strength of Orochimaru. Hiruzen at least taught the shinobi arts well to his students. Come invited Naruto, beckoning Orochimaru. Sakura stared as Naruto goaded Orochimaru. She was so absorbed in the fight unfolding beneath her refuge that she failed to notice Sasuke stirring. Was Naruto so confident in his own strength? Irritating Orochimaru was a sure way to achieve a painful death. He was described as a man with immense power and a huge arsenal of jutsu, who challenged the Yandaime for the post of Hokage. A veteran of the Third War and trained personally by the Sandaime, Orochimaru was feared by all but the Kaja and the other S-class shinobi. That was the man Naruto was challenging so casually. Yet looking at his almost excited face, Sakura believed that he could hold his own. That thought sent shivers up her spine. Oh, came Sasuke as grown. He sat up groggily staring blankly at Sakura. Orochimaru. He stood up immediately, looking around for the sunin. Sasuke-kun! exclaimed Sakura, glad that he was awake. Where's Naruto? questioned Sasuke urgently. However strong Naruto was, he would never be able to stand up to Orochimaru. Sakura got an odd look on her face and pointed at a spot below them. Sasuke walked to the edge of the massive branch. What he saw would redefine his conception of Naruto forever. The boy he had so callously written of Dobe stood opposite Orochimaru calmly, silver chakra leaking off him faintly, on the verge of combat. The ground around the two of them was cracking up under the pressure of the chakra being released, and that awed him. He was no censor, and he could still feel the enormity of their power as high up as he was. If he got close, he imagined he would faint from the overload. He felt no jealousy towards Naruto. Instead he just felt awe, pride, and overpowering concern for the safety of his teammate. Together he and Sakura watched closely as Naruto and Orochimaru finished gathering their chakras. Come. Orochimaru shot towards Naruto with blinding speed, going directly at his vital points. Naruto blocked calmly, and countered with his own strike which was also blocked. The two opponents glanced at each other and acted simultaneously, beginning their battle in earnest. The lethal snake Teijutsu of Orochimaru was matched strike for strike by the nature fist of the Shodei Hokage. Everywhere they met, gusts of wind blew off and the ground exploded. Naruto was drawing strength from the abundant nature chakra pervading the forest and kept on increasing the power of his strikes. His blows were getting heavier and heavier. Orochimaru could hardly believe he was fighting a genin, the strength of his blows was unbelievable. Naruto was enjoying himself thoroughly, the sunin was truly a snake through and through. He spoke like one, acted like one and was certainly was as lethal as one. Naruto dodged one of Orochimaru's kicks and it impacted the tree behind him, barreling through its trunk and cutting into half. Naruto grinned. Orochimaru was very strong, strong enough that he would challenge him considerably at his current chakra capacity. Of course if the sunin had fought Senju Hashirama at full strength, he would be crushed in an instant. He appeared in front of Orochimaru and aimed a kick saturated with his chakra at his head. Orochimaru blocked it, but was blown back through another mile of trees at the sheer strength of the blow. The sunin looked livid when he confronted Naruto again, looking worse for the wear. Seni Ijashu. Massive snakes shot out from Orochimaru's hands and flew directly at Naruto's throat. Naruto held out his hands in the serpent seal. Dotan, Chikyu no Agama. Two massive scythes of earth rose on either side of the approaching serpents and fell, skewering them into halves. Orochimaru was already going through a sequence of hand seals. Naruto could feel a massive amount of futon chakra gathering. Futon, de tapa. A massive blast of air ripped towards Naruto, destroying trees and ground alike. Dotan, Shinju Zanshu no Jutsu. Naruto went underground and appeared behind Orochimaru with a shower of earth. The sunin reacted instantly, forming seals rapidly. Naruto did not need a sequence of hand seals, though. He needed just one. Dotan, Haritsuk no Sopeku. 
An extremely sharp spike of earth blasted from the earth near Naruto's feet and sunk into Orochimaru's chest. Its impact was so great that Orochimaru was sent flying back and the sharp end of the spike sticking out of his back crashed into a tree, effectively nailing the sun in. Orochimaru opened his mouth, spitting himself out, shedding his skin like the snake he was. He looked at Naruto with a lopsided grin. It's been fun, Naruto-kun, but I cannot play any longer. You are too strong to be left alive. Naruto faced Orochimaru impassively, feeling the massive spike in the Sunin's chakra. It was of no element, but it felt somewhat, ethereal. Yes, that was the best word. Mandara no Jin. Orochimaru's mouth opened disgustingly wide and out came a multitude of snakes. Thousands upon thousands of the white reptiles rushed rapidly towards Naruto, piling up to 30 feet and spanning a great width. Naruto was staring, amazed at the magnificence of the jutsu. He had never seen its like, even as Hashirama. Out of the mouth of every one of the tens of thousands of snakes rushing towards him came out a sword he recognized well. The sword of Kusanagi, dripping with poison. This was a very powerful technique, and he could not counter it with Dotan or Sudan. The thousands of Kusanagi would just rip through. He could not reveal Mokutan yet though he could easily stop the snakes with that, Kusanagi or not. Which left? The air around Naruto turned blinding silver for half a mile in all directions, chakra pouring out of every one of his tenkutsu in a torrent. He raised his palms rooting all his chakra into them. Orochimaru looked stunned by the magnitude of the chakra Naruto was releasing. The multitude of snakes was almost upon him, the heap growing all the time. Naruto breathed deeply and slammed his glowing palms into the ground. A massive semi-circular shockwave erupted from Naruto's position, blowing each and every one of the snakes to pieces. The forest was destroyed as utterly as Orochimaru's 10,000 shockwave reached the sun in and hurled him far away for the third time. Naruto looked around at the devastation he had caused sadly, never liking to see the destruction of trees. Let alone those created by himself. He immersed himself in his senses and sighed in relief as he felt Orochimaru fleeing rapidly towards the east boundary of the forest. That battle had pushed him a little. He sensed Sasuke and Sakura tremulously approaching him from behind. You can come out now, Sakura and Sasuke. The duo slowly walked towards him, not believing the sheer destruction unleashed during the battle. They had never seen a fight like that before and never understood the meaning of a Kaja level fight as they did now. You are so powerful, Naruto. You actually drove Orochimaru back. Sakura said in absolute wonderment. Good fight, Dope Sasuke said, unable to think up any more praise for his rival. How stupid, he thought to himself. Naruto was too far ahead of him to be considered his rival. Gahaha. Naruto laughed happily. Thanks team, did you actually compliment me? HN, I think I did. Don't get too used to it though. Sasuke said, smirking. Naruto was his rival, alright. No matter how powerful he got. Sakura just smiled at her teammates. I have one last thing to do. Naruto said, sensing all around them for around 5 miles. No one. He assumed all teams were driven away by the scale of his and Orochimaru's fight. All teams had something resembling a sensor on their team, after all. They would have certainly given wide berth to a Kaja level fight. That suited him just fine. He looked at the devastation caused by his final attack and the absence of trees, and gathered his chakra. Mokutan Hiijutsu, Mori no Taito. The massive semi-circular area of the forest that was divested of trees for at least a mile rumbled. Small saplings rose up everywhere in the huge barren area slowly, and with a great rush shot up to become massive trees that repopulated the empty area. Sasuke and Sakura looked open-mouthed at their teammate who had just created about a square mile of forest. Naruto just kept stunning them regularly. Naruto looked at them amusedly. We need to leave the area now. I can sense multiple chakras approaching us and Sasuke still needs my healing. They nodded and shot off as one. Yujito, Samui, and Amwa had just finished off a team of Kiri, and were collecting their earth scroll. The Nyabaijin Hiroki felt an explosion of extremely dense chakra a good distance to their west. It felt familiar. There was also another very strong chakra that felt just evil. 
Naruto and someone who was no genin were engaged in combat. The ground shook violently for a few moments and then stopped. What was her fellow Jin Hiroki doing? To feel the tremors of his jutsu this far, that should be a very powerful technique. Amwa and Samui were prodding her quizzically. Yujito, could you sense whoever caused that tremor? Yes. That was the Kyuubi Jin Hiroki, Naruto. The chakra did not feel like any element, though. So he used the Kyuubi as chakra. No, it was his own. Not cool, not many people have the capacity or control to do such a thing with just pure chakra. Amwa in the meantime was into his own apocalyptic thoughts and was being ignored by the blondes. Kitten, that boy is no genin. Be wary of him, very wary. He seems to exude a chakra that can calm or even suppress me if need be. Yujito gave a mental nod to her by Jiryu. Suddenly she felt a release of unfamiliar chakra from Naruto. It felt like, life. What chakra could actually create life? She was suddenly pulled into her mindscape by the Nyabai. She stood in a lush grass plain, confronting the Hellcat. What? Yujito, Naruto either has the Mokuton, or the Rinnegan. What? There is no other explanation. That is how he suppressed Kurama so well, and seems to have the power to suppress me. Only two known techniques can create life, one is the Mokuton and the other is a Rinnegan technique called Banbutsu Sozo, the creation of all things. Both possibilities are extremely disturbing. Yujito was extremely stunned. Naruto most probably had one of two mythical bloodlines. The Rinnegan was the Rakota Senin's Dujitsu. The power he wielded with those eyes was said to be unfathomable, beyond human comprehension. The Mokuton was documented a little more. Senju Hashirama's strength with that bloodline was so great that he was compared to the Rakota Senin sometimes. Taming Nine Baijuyu like it was nothing? Both possibilities were extremely frightening for the elemental countries. A second coming of either of the two legendary figures would tip the scales, no, completely destroy the scales. Asama had to be informed immediately. She turned to Amwa and Samui. We need to get to the tower at the earliest. No wasting time. I have something extremely important to convey to Raikaj Asama. Her teammates seemed to recognize her seriousness and nodded. Gathering their chakra, they shot off rapidly towards the tower. Naruto had just finished patching up Sasuke. The trio had taken shelter in a clearing some distance from the previous fight. Sasuke could not believe that Naruto was so skilled a medic. How many talents did the blonde have? He felt so much better, now. Naruto sighed in satisfaction as he sensed Sasuke's chakra flowing calmly with no fluctuation. His teammate was as good as new. What is that seal you used on Sasuke-kun, Naruto? Naruto pondered for a moment. It is called an evil suppression seal. It is an advanced seal that can contain malicious influences, that is, until the user's will holds. So Sasuke team, you must never give in to the instincts that may be spawned in you by Orochimaru's seal, understand? Sasuke nodded briefly. Sakura glanced at Naruto. We still have need for an earth scroll, don't we? We cannot complete the exam without the Earth Scroll. Naruto grinned. We don't have to worry about that, Sakura-chan. It seems we have company he said, sensing the approach of the sound ninja. The foliage parted to reveal three figures sporting the Oto headband. The bandaged ninja of the team came to stand in front of Naruto. We are here for Uchiha Sasuke. Leave him to us and your lives will be spared. We will even give you our Earth Scroll. Naruto looked amused, as did Sasuke. Sorry, no deal. Leave us your earth scroll, and maybe we will spare you said Naruto. The one next to the bandaged nin yelled, D.O.S.U. Let us just kill these brats and get it over with. Die, Sasuke. Zankyuha. A funnel of air rippled from his arm and shot towards Sasuke, who disappeared. Naruto stared, intrigued. It seemed Sasuke's skill with the Shunshin had improved drastically. The team certainly knew how to use that cherry non of his. The trigger-happy sound Shinobi now laid face first in the dirt, Sasuke standing over him. Dosu shook his head. Zaku, you should have waited. Kin, take the pink-haired girl. I will take the blonde. Zaku, do not underestimate the Uchiha. 
Naruto was getting tired of these games. He just wanted to get the Earth Scroll and discuss the Orochimaru issue with Sarutobi. He needed to knock these children out fast. Sasuke, Sakura stand back. Sasuke, you are still not rested fully. Sakura you would take too much time to defeat that girl. Leave it to me. Not waiting for their responses, he just appeared in front of Zaku and knocked him out with a strong palm to the chest, sending him flying. Before the girl could react, she was incapacitated by a chop to her neck's vital point. Dosa pointed his arm towards Naruto for some kind of technique but was just too slow. Naruto buried Dosa to his neck with a simple headhunter technique and rendered him unconscious with a simple finger strike. Sasuke and Sakura no longer looked stunned, having expected something like this from the blonde. Huh, no need for powerful jutsu when simple techniques can do the job easily. Naruto went to the one called Dosu and searched him for an Earth Scroll. They were in luck. Grabbing the Scroll of Earth, Team 7 headed straight towards the tower. The tower in the Forest of the Dead. Naruto knocked on the Hokage's room absently. They had reached the tower with no problems, unless one took into account the genjutsu used to misdirect the participants. Sasuke had seen through that one easily with his Sharingan. They had then opened both their scrolls, causing Iruka to appear and congratulate them on their victory. Naruto had then sent through Iruka a missive to Hiruzen regarding his fight with Orochimaru. He was asked to attend a meeting of the Jounin immediately. Sasuke and Sakura went to rest before the next round occurred. Thus he entered the Hokage's office, noting the multiple Jounin present. Come in, Naruto. And stop trying to peep at Kuranis, posterior, Jiraiya. Naruto turned to see a tall and well-built white-haired man straighten quickly from his stealthy position behind the beautiful Kurenai. Sorry, sorry. He giggled perversely, his eyes round from what had obviously been an excellent peek. Naruto stared at the man with interest. His godfather by all accounts. He had no idea that the Gamasenin was a pervert on this scale. The Toad Sage had taught Minato, his father. That practically made him family. We have gathered to listen to Naruto's disturbing account of his encounter in the Chiyunin exam second round, tell us, Naruto. Naruto nodded, surveying all the Jounin present. Anko, Asuma, Kurenai, his sensei Kakashi, Genma, Aoba, Haid, and some others he did not know. They were all either elite Jounin or undercover Umbu. All of them with strong chakra and exceptional records. He could proceed with his briefing without fear of a leak, as he felt no questionable emotions from the powerful ninja in the room. We were following the river in the forest so we could encounter some team and grab their scroll. We encountered no one and I got suspicious. Anyway, I went to gather food when I sensed that Sasuke and Sakura were in distress. I rushed back and saw a snake-like man finish biting Sasuke. Jiraiya scowled. It was Orochimaru, wasn't it? Yes. The room erupted. The Jounin were all clamoring at the fact that Mir Jenin had to face an S-class criminal. Only Kakashi and the third looked cool. Naruto would never lose to somebody like Orochimaru. Jiraiya looked at all their reactions interestedly, noting the calm of Kakashi and the third. Those two knew something. Quiet. The Sandaime roared, causing the Jounin to calm down, though they all looked agitated still. Thank you. Now Naruto, proceed with your story. Naruto nodded. I healed Sasuke, and saw the seal on his neck. What is it with that seal, by the way? Anko stepped forward. Is Uchiha Sasuke dead? It is very rare that someone who receives that seal survives. Naruto looked amused. No he isn't, crazy snake lady. I was getting to that. You have that seal as well, don't you? I can feel its evil in your neck. Anko nodded in a subdued manner. The third cleared his throat, causing attention to center on Naruto again. As I was saying, I saw Sasuke writhing in pain from that seal and I suppressed it with my own seal. The third hardly looked surprised. The Jounin were still whispering at the revelation of Naruto's prowess, while Jiraiya looked interested. Which seal did you use, Kaki? He asked. Figures. It made sense that the son of the Red Death and his beloved pupil, Minato, would be this strong. He already felt proud of the young boy he thought of as a grandson, even though he did not let it show. 
the evil suppression seal. It is only a makeshift solution, though, and will only last as long as Sasuke is will to fight us. Anyway, Orochimaru was incensed by my actions and we fought. After a good Taijutsu battle, we fought with Ninjutsu. I literally nailed him with an earth spike, after which he got angry. Everyone wore disbelieving faces. A genin keeping up with Orochimaru. He spat out about ten thousands of white snakes at me. Oh, and he had the Kusanagi no Tsurugai. Each and every snake had Kusanagi jutting out of its mouth, aimed at me dash. Jiraiya interrupted. That was Orochimaru's Mandara no Jin, when he used it on me there were about a million of those things. What did you do? Naruto looked annoyed by all these interruptions. I was getting to that, Erosenin. Jiraiya looked indignant. Do not bastardize my sacred name, Kaki. Asuma looked a little irritated. If you don't mind, Jiraiya-sama. Jiraiya looked sheepish. Right, right. Thank you. Now, with those snakes piling up on me I had no choice but to blow them to pieces. I assume you all felt the tremor. The Jounin all nodded, wide-eyed. How? Asked Jiraiya, intrigued and hiding his amazement well. His former teammate must be losing his touch. I have enormous chakra, and my control is good. I can release a concentrated explosion of my chakra if necessary, causing great damage. Just like Tsunade, muttered. An amazed Jiraiya. Naruto himself was proud of his granddaughter. Apparently, the mischievous little girl had taken after him at least a bit. Then Orochimaru left. I think he was surprised, more than anything. He came to test us more than anything, I think, and did not expect me to be so strong, we need to be cautious. Why was Orochimaru here, of all places? He directed the question to Jiraiya. Jiraiya looked at Hiruzen, who nodded. He faced the Jounin and said in his resonant voice. He is after Uchiha Sasuke's Sherinan. He had this med delusion of learning all of the jutsu in the world, and thinks Sherinan will accelerate his plans. The third side. He never understood Orochimaru, even as a little boy. He was too alien. The Sandaime cleared his throat again. Orochimaru has something bigger going on. Jiraiya has brought me word of my errant former students' frequent visits to Suna. That and the fact that Suna has sent their clearly unstable Jin Hiroki to Kanaha lead me to believe that Kanaha might not be safe in the next few months. The Sandaime looked at Naruto. We have determined that Kabuto Yakushi is a spy for Orochimaru, his right hand even. He is quite strong. To keep track of him, we will need you to track and spy on him, Naruto. But the exams. Your actions in the forest of death lead me to believe that you are already Chiyunin material. I hope all of you agree. Here is an asked, looking around at the Jounin. They nodded as one. Any genin who stopped Orochimaru and brought his teammates back alive was a worthy Chiyunin, no doubt about that. Then it is decided. Naruto, henceforth you are a Chiyunin and will undertake your mission immediately. The rest of you, watch out for your genin. And Naruto, you will have to forfeit in the coming round as you are already a Chiyunin. They all nodded. Naruto and Jiraiya, please stay. The rest of you can continue. Naruto looked at Hiruzen. That was a good thing you did, Hiruzen. I would hate to be matched up against the children. It would be fairer to put them against Erosen in here. Jiraiya looked intrigued and irritated. Are you saying you are stronger than me? You may have fought the Hebai team to a stalemate, Kaki, but I am not called the strongest son in for nothing. The third looked at Jiraiya. Naruto here is extremely strong for a reason, Jiraiya. He will not tell you without the proper precaution. And I will not tell you right now, Aero Senin. You must wait for Kushina-san to return and I will tell the two of you together. Jiraiya nodded reluctantly. You have the right to your secrets after being independent for so long, Naruto. I won't press you when I have no right. Naruto nodded gratefully. Thank you. And I hold no resentment for you Aero Senin, the old man told me of the circumstances. I look forward to knowing you. Jiraiya looked emotional. Me too, Naruto, me too. The Sandaimel looked at them both. Let us discuss the espionage of Kabuto, you two. 
They nodded and began. The preliminaries. Are there any who wish to forfeit the exams by leaving at this stage? Kabuto came forward. I, Yakushi Kabuto wish to quit these exams, as I have little chakra at the moment and am liable to make a mistake. Granted. You may leave, Kabuto. Kabuto nodded, and walked out of the arena leisurely. Is there anyone else? I, Uzumaki Naruto, wish to quit. Personal reasons. The Sandai man nodded with a hint of a grin. You may leave, Naruto. Sasuke looked pissed, as did Sakura. They still did not like Naruto quitting. He had not told them why, except that the Hokage had requested it. Waving to his outraged teammates and stunned fellow rookies, Naruto began his mission of investigating Kabuto. Greetings, Orochimaru-sama. Orochimaru appeared out of thin air in front of Kabuto. Hello, Kabuto. Your information seems inaccurate. With leashed anger. What do you mean, Orochimaru-sama? Your useless cards, they told me Uzumaki Naruto was nothing but a dead last. Imagine my surprise when said dead last nullified my cursed seal, matched my Taijutsu, wounded me, and above all, destroyed Mandara no Jin. Kabuto was open-mouthed with surprise. And sweating as Orochimaru's massive killing intent filled the air. I, I had no idea, Orochimaru-sama. You can't have been serious while fighting a genin. Orochimaru's killing intent receded, the snake sun in calming down considerably. True indeed. But I could tell that he was holding back too, and I don't know by how much. I don't like the direction the invasion is going, we may need more reinforcements and I will change our plans. Kabuto nodded. How is the Edo Tensei coming along, Orochimaru-sama? Orochimaru looked slightly frustrated. The same, Hashirama cannot be resurrected, I have no idea why. But I have a backup, Kabuto. Sensei won't know what hit him. Don't fail me again, Kabuto. I don't like unknowns. Kabuto nodded. Go now, I have a grave to rob. Naruto opened his eyes, having heard everything through his concealed wood clone. So, Orochimaru was indeed planning an invasion of Kanaha and planned to assassinate Hiruzen. What really surprised him was the Sunin's audacity. Orochimaru actually used Tobirama's jutsu to resurrect Hashirama, in other words, himself. The idiot, he had no idea of the ramifications of that technique. Of course Edo Tensei would not work, the aspect of his soul as Hashirama had left the pure world. He could resurrect Tobirama, though. This could not be allowed, the dead were meant to be left in peace. He would hate to see Tobirama as a puppet of some upstart. This needed further consideration. Anyway, he had to go see what had happened in the preliminaries and then report to Hiruzen. It was Jiraiya's turn to watch Kabuto anyway. Ten days later. Naruto watched as Sasuke was being trained by Kakashi to up his speed. The young Uchiha had certainly taken well to the art of using Shunshin and had gained the second tomo of his Sharingan during the fight with Orochimaru. Sasuke's proficiency with Shunshin was growing at unprecedented levels, and he was using it quite creatively. He had apparently made quite the impression back at the preliminaries, moving so fast that his opponent could hardly see him, let alone touch him. Sasuke had apparently defeated him with speed and genjutsu alone not laying a single hand on his opponent. Sasuke was being called the second coming of the other great prodigy of the Uchiha, Shunshin no Shisui. The disadvantage with Shunshin was that one could not unleash ninjutsu instantaneously after using it, as the regathering of Chakra took time. He himself had only eliminated that problem partly. Sakura had tied with Ino, leading to both of them getting eliminated. Shikamaru had beaten his opponent, as had Shino. Chuji was eliminated along with Kiba. Intriguingly, the sound ninja he had beaten in the forest were nowhere to be seen. Jiraiya came to stand alongside him. Hey, Gaki, how are you doing? I finished my training just now, Aero Senin. I am watching Sasuke do his. Is your shift already over? Jiraiya nodded. Yeah. It is Hayate's turn to watch him now. Naruto nodded. Any particular reason you are here? Yes, Naruto. Sensei told me to tell you, Kushina arrived one day ahead of schedule for some reason. She should in Sensei's office by now. 
Naruto's heart skipped a beat. His mother was here, now? His face must have showed his agitation, for Jiraiya consoled him. She is your mother after all, Gaki. Just be yourself. Sensei has summoned me, Kakashi, you and Kushina for a meeting. Let me go get Kakashi and we will all go together. Naruto nodded mutely, unable to calm himself. Even all his years as Hashirama did not prepare him for something like this. He watched as Jiraiya spoke to Kakashi. Sasuke had left for his home. His father's teacher and student approached him and laid a hand on his shoulder each. You will be fine, Naruto, said Kakashi compassionately. They set off towards a meeting that was long overdue. Mother and son would be reunited at last. Kabuto had sensed the Jounin who was tailing him for some time. How long had Kanaha kept tabs on him? He had to eliminate this threat to the plan immediately. He set off towards an alley, in the direction of the Suna Jounin, Baki. The man tailing him was obviously not very good at it. He was clumsy and gave away too many openings. Kill him, or just feed him false information. Kabuto weighed both choices in his mind, and decided. It had to be done for the plan to succeed. Readying his chakra scalpels discreetly, he set off again. Kanaha would be ashes come the finals. The Hokage's office. Naruto stood in front of the Hokage's office, Jiraiya and Kakashi standing tall beside him. He knocked with trepidation. The door opened slowly, and Naruto entered. Standing next to Hiruzen was a fairly tall woman with long red hair that reached down to her waist. She wore the traditional umbu uniform, with two katanas strapped to her back in an X. He drank in the sight of his mother, who had returned to him after all these years like a parched man drank water. A sensing of her chakra set off a feeling of pride in him. She was very strong, with a powerful fire affinity and a stunning affinity to water. The emotions he felt from her were strong, so strong that it amplified his own, bringing unbidden tears to his eyes. Regret deeper than the deepest ocean, guilt raging like fire, and above all pride in him. A lone tear rolled down his cheek. Dimly, he noticed Kakashi, Jiraiya, and Hiruzen smile brightly at the sight before vanishing to presumably give them privacy. Kushina too seemed stunned with the Naruto she was now seeing. The last report she had gotten from her umbu contacts had shown her son to be a little shrimp who was basically a loser. Not this, young man, too tall for a 13-year-old genin. With his shoulder-length blonde hair and well-toned body, he could well be Minato in his youth. She stopped examining him and stared at his face. The face of the son she had essentially abandoned for his safety. The first thing that struck her was his eyes. Her son had innocent blue eyes that were set and hopeful at the same time. Not forest green eyes that gave off the wisdom of a lifetime, and shone with power unrestrained. The eyes were the windows to the soul. And the boy she was seeing through his eyes was no Jenin, Chiyunin, Jounin, or even a Kaja. He seemed to be more. Much more. An incarnation of mercy and hope, forgiveness and compassion. She could stand the silence no longer. Naruto. Naruto nodded tremulously. All his certainty as Hashirama left him standing as a little boy who ached for his mother. He saw her approach him as if it were a dream. She slowly came to him and caressed his face with trembling hands. I am sorry, Naruto. So sorry for all the pain you must have felt without me to love you. I only left for your safety. Kushina was now openly crying, her face showing her extreme anguish and self-loathing. Naruto too was shedding tears at this long-awaited moment finally arriving. It is all right, Kasan. Kushina flung herself at Naruto, hugging him tightly. The two remaining Namikaze were together again, the loss of their separation and love and hope at their reunion flowing through their veins like cleansing fire. Naruto smiled to himself softly, hugging Kushina tightly to himself. It would be all right. Naruto had, with some assistance from Kakashi and Hiruzen told his mother of his life after she left him. How he was thrown out of the orphanage and had fended for himself at the age of six in the cold streets and beaten almost to death regularly. How he was given an apartment for himself and lived there alone, loveless and scorned by all. His academy years. Now, it was time for the final secret, his true identity. He looked at Jiraiya and Kushina, assessing them. Kushina was not raging, as Naruto had expected her to be. 
She had an expression of uttermost self-loathing upon her face as she visualized the sufferings her child had gone through. The village should burn in hell for its ignorance. No mother should ever have to leave her child to suffer like this. Minato, he had faith in Kanaha. Like the trusting idealist he was, he had turned her little bundle of joy into a Jinhiraki knowing full well the hatred it brought. She still loved him, though. How could she hate him when she, still alive, had left her son to suffer? That would make her a hypocrite. Naruto looked at her almost as if he had read her mind. Do not hate the village for my suffering, Kasan. It was born of ignorance and I pity them for it. Jiraiya looked at him in amazement, Kakashi, and Hiruzen in pride. Kushina was incredulous, how can you not hate them, Sachi? Naruto turned to Hiruzen. Hiruzen, it is time. Kushina looked quizzically at Kakashi. Naruto walked to Mito's seal again, and activated it again. Jiraiya and Kushina looked unstunned. What was that seal? Kushina asked her son, awed by the chakra he had emanated. Naruto explained the seal to her and Jiraiya, causing them to sit in wonder of Mito's prowess. Kakashi and Hiruzen just looked on in anticipation. Kasan, Arosenin, it is time for me to reveal my secret to you. You are both seal masters and can understand better than most. Kushina and Jiraiya listened attentively. The sealing of the Kyuubi changed me, Kasan. It awoke in me something that should be impossible. Here he lifted up his black shirt, showing the room the changed dead demon seal on his stomach. Kushina and Jiraiya looked at the seal with curiosity. The two had a look of slight comprehension upon their faces. It awoke in you a new personality did it not, Sachi? I can deduce that much from the change in the seal. Naruto nodded appreciatively. It caused me to remember my previous life in this world and become both my old self and current one at the same time. Kushina looked distressed. As parents, they had not done right by their son. He had to undergo too many things that should not be experienced by any child. Do not be distressed Kasan. It is my old life that led me to become what I am now, to find peace. Kushina and Jiraiya looked at Naruto with anxiety. This could very well be harmful and was extremely unexpected. Naruto clasped his hands in the ram seal, flaring his chakra. Is that, nature chakra? Jiraiya asked in amazement. Only in major part, replied Naruto. His chakra always had a high concentration of nature chakra mixed in it. They had called it Mokutan Chakra. Kushina was amazed and at her son's chakra. He was unleashing enormous amounts and didn't even breathe hard. She watched as he molded Chakra. Mokutan, but oh no Hirogari. Impossibly, vines started spreading and flowers bloomed upon them covering the space of the entire office. Hiruzen looked stunned at seeing his sensei use Mokutan again. Kakashi looked odd. He would never get over Hashirama-sama using Mokutan in front of him. Naruto looked at Kushina and Jiraiya, who looked at the spectacle in amazement. He felt a sense of deja vu, having done this to Kakashi before. I was an Amsenju Hashirama, the Shodei Hokage of Kanahagakur. That's it for part 2. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.